Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Ayin Hey, Daf 75 of Masech Daf Psachim. Um, yeah, I guess today's Daf really uh, talks a lot about fire, different implementations of it. Um, roasting the carbon Pesach in fire and are coals considered fire? And that question really takes us um, for the bulk of today's Daf. So let us begin at the top of Ein Hei Amur Aleph, Ein Solen Esa Pesach V'chulei, who could remind me what the Mishnah had said? The Mishnah said that you're not allowed to uh, roast the Korban Pesach on a uh, grill. Okay? Now, the Gemara asks, My store is the, is, is, is the, um, what's the, what's the word for that? The incident? No. Eh, it's not the right word, but the story is the story to um, contradict, right? Meaning, we, oh man, it's, it's a little bit bothering me that I can't remember the word, but it's not such a big deal. Anecdote, anecdote, anecdote. Is the anecdote to contradict, meaning, the Mishnah had said that you are not allowed to roast the Korban Pesach um, on a grill. Immediately afterwards, the Mishnah brings an anecdote where Reb Tzadik says he was with Rabbi Gamliel, and Rabbi Gamliel instructed his servant Tevi to roast the Korban Pesach on a grill. Which is interesting, right? Meaning, the Mishnah says, don't cook a Korban Pesach on a grill. And immediately afterwards, the Mishnah brings an anecdote where Rabbi Gamliel cooked his Korban Pesach on a grill. Why would you bring a story that is the complete opposite of what you just said to be the halacha? So Gemara says, "My said the store. Like, what's going on? You're bringing uh, an, an anecdote that completely goes against the halacha that you just stated." So Don't worry, don't worry. The anecdote is just missing a few important words. We'll fill them in, and then things will make sense. This, this is how you have to teach it. That you're not allowed to use a grill. That's true, but if it's more of like a fire pit. So meaning you have fire, just like in a grill that we're familiar with, there's fire. And then we have like these grates on top of it and you put the meat on the grates. So this was different. This was more of like a fire pit. So you had the fire and then there were like basically, I don't know, let's say two walls or two pieces of metal on either end of it, right? So it's basically a whole bunch of coals. I guess almost like you see, you know, like um, those kebabs, you know, like those Persian kebabs, whatever, they just have like a grill with a whole bunch of coals and then you just take the skewers and you put it over the coals. So the meat isn't actually touching um, the metal grills. The meat is just right above the coals. So so that is what Raman Gamliel was using. So back in the Gemara from the top, my Silisto, are we bringing a, a anecdote that contradicts our uh, uh, halacha that we just stated. But if it is a grill that has like a big hole in it, more like a fire pit or not even like a fire pit, just like uh, as long as the meat isn't directly on the metal but opposite the coals, the opposite the fire, that would be okay. And Reb Tzadik says, that in fact there was an anecdote where Mugamlil said to his servant Tevi, um, go and roast for us the Korban Pesach on the open flame grill. What do you guys think of that? Sounds good, right? Right. Let's go weiter. So Rav Chinon Bar Idi asked Rav Adi Bar Hava, which Rav Adi Bar Hava do you think this was? Student of Rav or student of Rava? Chveis Nish. Tanu Shesiko Beklipi Orlam. Vigarfo. So what if you have a toner, you have an oven that you heated it up with a um, fire of like shells and stuff and peels of orla. Okay. Now, of course, we know that orla is also bano. You're not allowed to, um, you know, we had the sugya earlier about can you bake things can you bake bread in an oven that the heat is coming from peels and things of Orla? And there was machlokas between Rebbe and the Chacham. Rebbe says you would not be allowed to bake 
uh, uh, bread in an oven whose heat source is orla. So now, so asks Rav Chinna Bar Idi to Rav Adar Bar Hava Tanu Shisiko Beklipi Orla. So what if you have an oven? You heated it up with um, like peels and shells of orla, um, fruits that are within their first three years. Vigarfo, and but then you sweep out the fire. You sweep out the fire. So there's no longer any klipe orla in this oven. All there is in the oven right now is residual heat that, of course, got there by way of the fire of klipe orla. But the klipe orla themselves are gone. You swept them away. Bafobo sapas. And then you slap some dough onto the walls of this oven and you bake a bread with this residual heat. So according to Rebbe, when the Chavav Mudbez, 50 days ago, came out, said that you'd be unable to bake a bread in an oven whose fire is a fire of um, orla shells. What about in this case, where you swept out the fire and now it's just residual heat? So what would Rebbe say? Amrle. So Rav Adar Bar responds to Rav Chinana Bar Idi, Hapas Muteris. So Rav Adar Bar says that the bread is acceptable. Even Rebbe, who says that if you have an oven whose heat is coming from Klipe Orla, you cannot bake bread in there. However, if you swept away the coals of Klipe Orla, so then you would be allowed to bake the bread in the residual heat. So in the name of Asi, who said the name of Rabbi Yochanan, and we summon this Rabbi Asi, as of course we know, Adam Friedman, there was a discussion with Adam Masech the Shabbos, um, there's a few Rabbi Asis. one of the Rabbi Asis was a Tamur Chavar of Rav. So we summon was this one. Oh wait, oh no, one second, no, maybe not. Oh no, 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 what am I talking about? Wow, now I got confused. Right, one of them was the Tamar Chavar of Rav. Mistama, this was not that one because this is the Rabasi with Rabbi Yochanan. Mistama, this was the Rabasi with Rabbi Yochanan because he's quoting Rabbi Yochanan. Oops. So, asks Rav Chinana Bar Idi to Rav Adar Hava, who says that this bread that was baked in a oven that was heated up with Klipe Orla, but the Klipe Orla was swept out. He said, Rav Adar Hava says the bread would be mutter. So Rav Chinana Bar Idi says, wait, but Rav Chinana Sava said the name of Rav Asi, said the name of Rav Yochanan, Taner Sheisiko, if you have uh, an oven and you lit it up, Vigarfo, but then you swept it out. Now this isn't talking about Orla or anything, this is just talking about a regular oven, you heated up the oven, you swept out the coals, Vitzala Boas HaPesach, and then you put the Korban Pesach in the oven and you roast the Korban Pesach in the residual heat. Einze so Rabbi Yochanan says that this would not be an acceptable method of roasting the carbon Pesach if you already uh, swept out the, the, the coals. Because the, we, have, we have two psukim in which the Torah instructs us that we have to um, roast the carbon Pesach tzliesh. And therefore, because it says tzliesh, roasted on fire twice, the Torah is... Um, you know, making it clear that we don't just want it to be residual heat, we want it to actually be over a flame. So now, time to Gali Rachmana, Tzliesh, Tzliesh, Tepaim. Now the question is, the question that Rav Chinnah Bar Idi is asking of Adabar Hava is that it sounds like the reason why Rav Yochanan is saying that if you sweep out the oven, the oven, you would be unable to cook a Korban Pesach in that oven is because it specifically says in the Torah, Tzli'esh twice, right? Highlighting the importance of there being fire there. Halo gali rachmana. But if the Torah would not have specifically indicated on two occasions that we needed to be roasted over a fire, have amina, Tzli'esh who, then if not for the fact that it says Tzli'esh twice, I would have thought that... Um, what would I have thought? Ah, I would have thought that residual heat is fine. Meaning, because the Torah specifically says by the Korban Pesach that it has to be Tzli Eish, roasted over fire, well, that's how we know that it's like very significant that there actually be fire there. 
But if not for the fact that by the Korban Pesach it said Sli'esh twice, I would have assumed residual heat is just fine. So, so, what's the question? The question is, is that apparently in general situations that are not the Korban Pesach, Sli'esh, uh, uh, residual heat, should be considered roasting. And if that's the case, well then residual heat should be considered baking. And it should be considered like you're baking bread with the, um, with Klipe Orla. And it should be a problem. Because residual heat is considered like baking. And if the heat is coming from Klipe Orla, it should be a problem. Ravada Barahava, how come you're saying that it's mutter? Omale. So Ravada Barahava responds, Gali Rahman Ahosam Vyafinun Mino. So Ravada Barahava responds and he says, um, actually that's not the correct way to understand it. Don't, do not say like you said, which was that, well, it's specifically Tzli Eish, that it has to be over fire by the Korban Pesach, but not by other cases. No. The Torah is teaching us by Korban Pesach, yes, it says Tzli Eish, to highlight the fact that it needs to be roasted over fire, but then extend that to everywhere else. Make that a binyan av. Make that the precedent from which we learn for everything else, i.e. that it's own meaning by Korban Pesach, we say Tzli Eish twice to say, make sure you do it over fire. And then we can apply that to all cases and saying, and say that just like by Korban Pesach, it's only considered roasted if it's over fire. So also by all cases, it's only considered roasted if it's over fire. Um, and therefore, back to our oven of Orla, if you sweep out the Orla and it's gone, it will not be considered baking anymore. And therefore, the bread that you bake in that oven will be acceptable, will be kosher. Vibay Sema. Or I can give you another reason. Hosom. When it comes to Korban Pesach, time of the cause of Rachman, it's Liesh, Shtei Paimim. Yeah, we know that you have to roast the, uh, Korban Pesach over fire, specifically because it says Sliesh, roasted over fire twice. Halo cause of Rachmana, but if it wouldn't have said Sliesh twice, right, Halo cause of Rachmana, it's Liesh, Shtei Paimim, Hava Amina, what would I have said? Aesh, Kapit Rachmana, I would say, Look, you know, if all it said was Tzliyesh once, that you have to roast the Korban Pesach. So I would, you know, try to, of course, get to the, you know, understand the uh, letter, so the, the the intention. What's the intention? The intention is that we want you to, um, you know, roast the Korban Pesach with fire. Now, you know, even if you sweep out the oven, you know, it, it, it maybe the flame itself isn't there, but it's still heat. Right, it's it, it's it, the oven got heated up by fire. Meaning, if it only said sliyish one time, I wouldn't necessarily say there specifically has to be a flame present. I would say that it has to be heat. You know, take some uh, wood, heat up an oven. If you want to sweep it out afterwards, f- who cares? Sweep it out afterwards. What do you care? I mean, you're you're still going to be roasting the korban pesach, you know, from heat that was created by fire, right? So therefore. The Torah had to say Tzli'esh twice to say, no, we specifically want there to be fire over there. It's not enough that it, that there's just heat. However, Aval Hocha, but over here when it comes to Orla, it's not about, uh, you know, fire and heat. The issue is about Orla. And the Orla is gone. And therefore it's Mutter. All right. Very good. That is what Ravada Barahava responded to Rav Chinan Abaridi to explain why uh, if you have an oven and you heat it up with shells of orla, which are also run up, but then sweep them away, any bread that you bake afterwards with the residual heat would be permitted. All right, let's go weiter. Tana Rabbanan, the rabbis taught, Chatcho unusana agabe gecholim. Okay. So if you take the Korban Pesach and you cut it, now obviously you're not cutting it into pieces because you have to roast it. You know, we, we saw specific instructions about how to roast the Korban Pesach. But if you roast, if you like, just kind of make some strategic, strategic incisions um, so that it will cook well, right? So you're not like separating limbs. You're just kind of making some cuts. I don't know why that's so important, but... And then you put it on two coals. The question is, is that going to be considered Sli Eish? Rebbe Omer, Omer Anish is at Sliesh. So Rebbe says, my opinion is that that would be considered Sliesh, it would be considered roasting, all good. 
Now, we're going to basically spend a lot of time now trying to figure out, does Rebbe really hold, can Rebbe really hold that coals are considered fire? So here we go. Romile, Rav Achad Voy Bar Ami, the Rav Chizda. So Rav Achad Voy Bar Ami, he asks, Rav Chizda, Miyama Rebbe Gechalim Eishnenu, would Rebbe really say that coals are considered fire? Viraminhu, we have a kasha. Michfas eish. The Pasuk says in the context of uh, Tsaras, exciting times. The Pasuk says Michvas eish. It's talking about burns. In the Elish Nichva Baesh. So if it says burnt in a fire, so all I know is a burn that comes directly from fire. Nichva Bigacheles. What if you got burnt with a coal? Biremets, with like hot, like ashes. Besidroseach, with very hot um, lime. Begipsisoseach, very hot gypsum. You guys know what gypsum is? Is it even pronounced that way? Is it gypsum? Do you know what that is? Stomach, some kind of a lime. Vichol dovar abomina or, and anything that comes from like a source of fire. The isui chame or, to even include. Um, hot water burns. Minai. How do you know any of these kinds of burns would be included in this discussion of burns in the Torah? So the Pasuk says Michva twice to include even these other kinds of burns. Now, time of the Rabbi Rachman, Michva, Michva. So the Gemara says, yeah, okay. We know that all of these other types of burns, including coal burns, are considered burns only because it says Michva twice. Hello, Rabbi Rachman, Michva, Michva. But if it wouldn't have said Michva twice, Gichalam Laveish Ninu. Well, then I would not assume that coals are considered fire. Meaning, the Pasuk says Michvas Eish. It's gotta be a burn of fire. Now, all we know from Michvas Eish is a burn that Mamish comes from fire. All of these other kinds of burns, including coal burns, would not be learnt out from fire itself. They're not you know, strictly speaking, fire. We only include those kinds of burns because it says michva twice. The implication being that ash, when it, when we say fire, it does not include coals. We have to specifically include coals from a special riboy. So Amale, who said to who? Who's even talking now? Ah, right. Rav Achadvoy asked Rav Chizda. So Rav Chizda answers Rav Achadvoy. Was it Rav Achadvoy by Ami? Yeah. Amlis of Chizda responds, Gacheles shall eats lo it's trichkwal rabuye. Yeah. This pasuk where we say, Michva, Michva, Ribui, to include a coal, it's not talking about a wood coal. Kitz trichkwal gacheles shall mateches. We need the pasuk, um, to teach us a coal of, of, uh, of metal, like a, a metal ember. Um, if you get a, a burn from a metal ember, Sounds uncomfortable. So that would also be considered a burn. But a, 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 a wooden coal, that would just be considered fire. And uh, so I guess when Rebbe was saying that you can cook your carbon Pesach on coals, and that would be Tzliyesh, so that's talking about wooden coals, that's considered fire. V'gecholim shomateches laveish nenu. So now the Gemara says, wait a second, are we assuming that um, coals of metal would not be considered fire? What about that? Let's read that again. But by the daughter of a coin, right? the, the Torah says, Bas coin, um, that if you have the daughter of a coin, I think, was it Taka Machlokas and Masech the Sanhedrin? If she was a Mi'orasa or not, I think she was talking Mi'orasa. I think she was talking betrothed. And, um, yeah, I think that that's the, I think that, 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 that was part of the whole machlokas dar in Msech the Sanhedrin about is Srefa more unpleasant than stoning? Because I think Nara Mi'orasa specifically gets stoning. Now the Baskoin gets burning. So I think we wanted to assume, well, if she gets a special uncomfortable treatment of burning, then it must be more uncomfortable. Um, what are we talking about? 
So we're talking about burning um, um, daughters of Kohanim who have um, relationships, who sleep with, uh, yeah, yeah. So you have a, a daughter of a coin who I believe is betrothed. She's like engaged. And then she sleeps with another man. So we have to burn her. So the question is, how do we burn her? So, Vamra of Masna, so says of Masna, Psila Shalever, are you Osinla? That they would take hot lead, they would heat it up, pour it down her throat, and her insides would get burnt. Um, and that is how she would uh, die. That's how she would die. Um, so it says over there, Baish Tisar, that we have to burn her in fire. And we seem to be saying, yeah, how are we burning her in fire? By pouring hot lead down her throat. So it would seem that hot lead is considered fire. So shiny awesome. It's different by the Baskoin, Dharmaka Baish Tisari. Because it says in the Pasuk that Baish in fire, Tisare. Tisare, tisare is like Nifal, meaning passive, kilo, any, any kind of burning. Because it says Tisare, it even comes to include metal. But Aish alone would not be considered metal. Meaning metal, when it says Aish alone, it would not include metal. Um, so when it says tisaref, it includes any kind of fire that comes from, any kind of burning that comes from fire, including hot metal. Now the question says, now the Gemara asks, the Choshikin Eishatzma? So, okay, fine. So I'm saying, that we're gonna, when we do Srefa for, as a capital punishment, um, it even includes hot metal. The implication being what? That fire itself certainly you would be allowed to use like that when you do sreifa for as a capital punishment you can push it burn somebody at the stake with fire what should we just like take like bundles of twigs and uh cooker so so we make a shava that it says sreifa by the children of a harin who um you know, another of an view. And it also says Sweifa by Baskoin where it says Baish Tisar. Malaholan Sweifas Nishama Vigufkayam. Just like by Nodavinavihu, their souls got burnt and their bodies remained intact. Afkan Sweifas Nishama Vigufkayam. Also by a Baskoin. When we do Sreifa, um, it's going to be a type of Sreifa where the insides get burnt, but the outsides remain intact. So we're not talking about cooking you in fire. We're talking about hot lead down the throat. The insides get burnt out. The outsides remain intact. Okie dokie. Vinavila chamea or. Okay, well if that's the case, why does it have to be hot lead? Maybe we could use hot water. Pour a whole pot of hot water down her throat and she'll die that way. What do you guys think about that? Doesn't sound very nice, right? Mishum de Rav Nachman. Well, we don't do that because of Rav Nachman. Dom Rav Nachman, Amr Kovid, I have to lorecha kamocha. That Rav Nachman says you have to love your friend like yourself. Bror lo misa yafe, choose for him a good capital punishment. Meaning, okay, this fellow needs to be killed. We gotta burn him or her. But still, you know. Do it in such a way that at least it'll be quick. That it won't be, uh, I guess, technically die in the way that you would like to die. But anyways, it wouldn't be very nice to pour hot water down somebody's throat. Le- uh, hot lead, I guess, is probably slightly better. Although I can't imagine it's ideal, but I guess better than hot water. Well, once we have Rav Nachman, who says, Make sure that you kill your friend in a pleasant way. So then why do I need the Gezeir Shava from the children of Aharon to say that uh, it means don't burn somebody in a little campfire? That you have to pour really hot lead down their throat. If we're going to say it's Kamocha, I don't know, would you want to die in a campfire? Hot lead, I guess, sounds better. All right. So Amri, Ilav Gezeir Shava. Well, I would say, well, if not for the fact that we have the Gezer Shava to say that we need a type of death where the soul gets burned but the outsides remain intact. 
have Amina Sreifa, Sinshom of Guf Kaim, Lav Sreifa. If not for the fact that I have the Gzair Shava, I would have thought that a type of death where the soul gets burned, but the body remains, the outside body remains intact, is not really considered burning. That we need toast. Toast is considered burning. Ve'imishim de Rav Nachman. And if we're concerned about Rav Nachman, about, um, you know, Vafta Recha Kamocha, Nefush Lachavile is more Tuva. Kechid de Tamuz Ba'agala. So, if we're concerned about Vafta Recha Kamocha, so just don't make a small little campfire, make Pashit a raging bonfire. Meron. Lagba Omer. Throw somebody in Darin. So in that way, it'll be Vafta Recha Kamocha, it'll be fast. So, Kamash Malan, that is why we have the Xer Shavit to say, no, we're not talking about toast. We're talking about, like, B'nai Aharon, Sreifas Nisham Vigruf Kaim, that the, that the soul gets burnt, but the, the, um, out, external body remains intact. And you see that word there, Ba'agala. It's that same word as, like, in Kaddish, Ba'agala is Mankari bin Muhammad, that it means, uh, Ba'agala means quickly. Okay, that was an interesting exploration. Now, so back to the original question. Well, if we're not then talking about burning a person in a campfire when it says in the Torah, Sreifa, well then, what's the deal with Aish? If you can't actually use Aish. So, the point of, of, of fire, of Aish, right? When it says, that you have to burn this Baskoin in, in fire. Well, if you're not really burning it in fire, so why does it say fire? Well, because it's saying that it has to be something that got heated up from fire, meaning this hot lead has to be heated up over a fire. It can't be, let's say there was like, I don't know, molten hot lead in the ground or something, and you just take it out in a cup or whatever. Don't pour that down her throat. It would have to be like um, lead that you heated up over fire. Interesting stuff. Let's go weiter, friends. Amalir Rabiyirmiya the Rabzera. And it says Rabiyirmiya to Rabzera v'cholecha d'chsev ba'ish tisari f'lerabos so we just said that because it says by a baskoin, by ish tisareif, it means any kind of ish, right? anything that comes from fire, such as hot lead. So Rabiri asks Rabzir, is that really true? Is that really true that whenever it says, you know, sreifa in the context of ish, right, like by ish tisareif, for example, that it includes any kind of, you know, item that, that got heated up by fire? Let's read that again. Wherever it says Ba'esh Tisareif, or really what Rabbi is asking is Sreifa next to Esh. Is that coming to include all types of burning that comes from fire? But what about cows that you burn, right? So, for example, like by the, if the, um, if the, uh, Nasi, if the king sins, so he brings a special type of korban chatas, and that korban chatas is brought outside of, uh, of the city and burnt outside of the city entirely. So it says by Paraman Israfim, Dirsibu Visarif also al Aitzim Baesh, that you're gonna do Srefa, you're gonna burn it on wood by Aish with fire. So we see Srefa and we see fire, and that doesn't seem to be including any t- any type of heat that comes from fire. Vitani we learn in the price of Baesh Velobasid Rosah. You gotta burn this cow in fire, not in, uh, you know, really hot lime. Velo be gypsis rotzeach, not with really hot gypsis. Uh, again, gypsum, gypsum, some kind of lime, I think. No. So the question is, how come we're saying that Ba'esh Tisareif can't come, seems, uh, is including all types of fire, yet when it says Vesaref also, um, ala eitzim Ba'esh, where it says Srefa and fire, it doesn't seem to be including anything that comes from fire. So Amalei, so Zerah answers Rabbi Yirmiyach Yash to Hasam when it comes to um, Baskoin, Ksiv Ba'esh Vadu Tisarif, the Rabbis Kol Sreifos Abos Mach Masayish. When it comes to Baskoin, i.e. doing Sreif on a, on a human being as a capital punishment, so it says Ba'esh Tisarif. So the 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 tisareif is coming to explain that when it says ba'esh, it means any kind of fire. Again, the rabbis call sreifos abos machmas ha'esh ha'esh to include all types of burning that comes from fire, including hot metal, for example. 
Hacha, but over here by the, um, uh, um, what do we call it? Parman Esrafim. Ksiv Vesaraf also al Eitzim Paesh. It first says Vesaraf also, Srefa, and then it says al Eitzim Paesh, and it says fire at the end. Livasof Eish. So it's fire at the end. The name of the Eish in Midiachmin Alo to say specifically fire but nothing else. Meaning, when you start with Paesh, and then you say Tisaref, so it starts kind of more limited, and then it gets expanded. Paesh, Tisaref, to include all types of things that come from fire. But when it says Visaraf also al Eitzim Paesh, so it starts with something which sounds like it might be more inclusive, Visaraf, any kind of burning, but then it concludes Paesh with fire. No, it's specifically fire, nothing else. So it depends kind of like the direction of things. If it's Paesh, Tisaref, it's inclusive. If it's Visaraf, and then Paesh, it's limited. But the Gemara asks a very good question, which is, wait a second. Also, when it comes to Parman Esrafim, it actually also does say Tisaref at the end. What does it say? And if you look in that Pasuk, take a look. In the Pasuk it says, Visaref also al Eitzim Ba'esh, al Shefa Chadash and Yisarif. But then it says, al Shefa Chadash and Yisarif. So there also it says Eish and then Yisarif. So Amri, the answer, Ahu Yisarif mi Bari le Lichadetanya. No, that Yisarif is not coming to teach that you can burn the Parman Esrafim with any type of fire. Rather, um, it's needed for the following Bryce, the Yisarif, Afapisha, Ein Sham Deshen, right? You, you, you burn the Parman Esrafim outside of the city. Even if there's no ashes there, right? Because it says, Al Shefech Hadesh and Yisarif, that you burn the Parman Esrafim in the same place where you bring out the ashes from the Mizbeach. Now, what it's saying is that even if there are no ashes there at the time, because they cleared them away, you would still burn the Parman Esrafim over there. And additionally, Yisarif Afapisha Hitzis or Berubo, that you have to, it has to be completely burnt. So even once you, um, you know, the fire has, has consumed most of it, you still have to keep burning it until it's completely consumed. Ravina Amma, Ravina says, Kroch Vitani. Okay, so again, going back to the question of Rebbe, right? We've ultimately, this all started with the question from Rebbe, that Rebbe says that you're allowed to roast the Korban Pesach on coals. We said, wait a second, are coals really considered fire? But what about by, when it comes to burns, Michvas Eish, and we had to include coals from the fact that it says Michva Michva twice. Um, but Eish, strictly speaking, wouldn't be considered coal. So the first answer that we gave was that um, wooden coals would be considered fire. Metal coals had to be included from Michva Michva. Ravina gives a different answer. Ravina Amakroch Vitani. Ravina actually learns the Brisa a little bit differently. He says, actually, bundle together coals with fire. Let's see, what, what, what does this mean? Michvas eish, okay, the Pasuk says, being burnt by fire would be considered a burn in the context of tzaras. Ein the elo shenichva ba eish u v'gacheles. You hear that? So he puts in gacheles there as well. So when it says, michvas eish, all I know is a burn that comes from fire or by coals, i.e. coals are also considered fire. And then what about all these other things? How do I know? Let's read that again. If you became burned by hot ashes, with uh, hot lime, or hot gypsum, gypsum, or anything that comes from fire, or to include even hot water, how do we know that those would also be considered burns in the context of Tsaras? Therefore, it says michva twice to include any kind of um, burn that comes from fire. Um, but according to Ravina, um, coals are grouped together with fire, i.e. they would be considered simply fire. Let's move on. Rava Rami, Rava asks the following question. Would Rebbe really say that coals are considered fire and, and therefore you can... Um, roast your carbon pesach on coals, very many, but we have a kasha, gachale. It says in the context of, uh, the incense that, um, at the beginning of Parshas Achremos, when it's describing the avoda of the besame, uh, of the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur. So it says over there, gachale. Coals. Yachal omenmos. So if it says coals, maybe, uh, meaning, be, be, the, the, the pasuk is, is, is describing that, 
the Kohen Gadol would take some coals and he would take some incense and make a shidduch and, 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 and burn it. So, when it says gachale, coals, yachol omumos, is it possible that they could be not such hot, raging, glowing coals? Maybe dim coals. Tamalomar esh. Therefore it says fire. I esh, yachol shaleves. Okay, if it says fire, then I might think he would have to take a flame of fire. Tamalomar gachale. Therefore it says coals. Okay, it's adnu. So what's the deal? Is it coals? Is it a flame? What is it? Maybe min aloha shows what you do is you take a coal that is glowing. Okay, fine. Vagufakasha. Now we say one second, this is contradictory. On the one hand, Amar, you said, Gachale Yahul Omamos, Amaloch Shos Eishninu. On the one hand, you're saying, well, if it just said Gachale, I might think you can use dim coals, implying, or at least we want to say that it implies, that glowing coals wouldn't be considered coals. They would be considered fire. But if we keep on reading in that price, so we say, that if it says, Eish, I would think specifically a flame. Therefore it has to say, coals. Implying that even glowing coals are not fire. Right? It says, if it, if it would have just said fire, I would assume just a flame. Implying that fly, fire alone would not include Glowing coals. So these glowing coals seem to be falling through the cracks, right? On the one end, if it says gachale alone, I would think glowing coals. If it would only say esh alone, I would... Th- no, 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 I'm sorry. If it would say gachale alone, I would think dim coals. If it would only say esh alone, I would think fire. But what about this glowing coals thing? The Amr of Sheshis, and if Sheshis says, Haki Katani, this is how you have to understand this, Brisa. So if it would say Gachale, right, these coals, so I may have thought I can use any kind of coals, right? The coin Gadol can use any kind of coals with the incense. Dim, glowing, Tamalomar Esh. Therefore it says Esh. Okay, Esh, if we just say fire, Yacho Shaleves, I would think that it's only a flame. Tamaloma Gachale. Therefore, it says, coals. Okay, it's sad. Maybe min aloha shos. You bring from the glowing coals. Meaning, so Rav Rav Sheshis explains that, um, or was it Rav Sheshis? Oh no, where am I? Uh oh, where did I go? Oh no. Yes, Rav Sheshis. Sorry for that. Yes, Rav Sheshis. So, so, no, where are we? Who could tell me what I'm talking about? What I'm talking about is this. The Rav Sheshis explains his brysa, okay? To me. That, we're talking about the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur, burning the incense. Now, it says over there that it takes Gachalei Eish. Now, if it would only say Gachalei, explains of Sheshes, I would think that maybe you can use dim coals, maybe you can use glowing coals. I don't know. So therefore it says Eish, fire, right? But if it, if it would only say fire, so then I would assume a flame. That it has to be a flame. Therefore it says Gachalei Eish to make it like kilo compromise that you want it to be coals, but you want it to be very hot coals, you want it to be glowing coals. Okay, but it says... Now, this is really the conclusion of the question. Mikomakom, nonetheless, kechalim to ikre eish vikasha lirebi. Nonetheless, eish alone, if it would only say fire, it would be a flame. It would not be a glowing coal. So we see that fire alone is not a glowing coal. How could Rebbe say that you're allowed to cook the, you're allowed to roast the korban pesach over coals if, when it says tzli eish, mistama, that would not include coals. Amr Abaye Tritzachi. So Abaye says, you can answer in the following way. Gachale, that when it says in the Pasuk calls, Yachol Omimos Velo Lo Chashos. You hear that? Abaye says, if it would only say Gachale, if it would only say calls, I would specifically think dim calls. Tamalomar Eish, therefore it says Eish, Ye Eish, Yachol Ratzah Shalheves Yavi, Ratzah Gacheles Yavi. And then, says Abaye, in explaining the Brisa that, but if it would just say Eish, I could then think not only a regular flame, but also glowing coals, meaning I can have a choice, or the Kohen Gadol would have a choice. Either he could burn the incense with a flame, or what would also be included in Eish is another option, which is a glowing coal. And I, and the Kohen Gadol can choose which one he wants. Tamalomer Gachalei, 
Therefore, it says, Kachalei HaKetzad, what does that mean? Maybe min aloha shows you specifically use the glowing coal. So, the way that Abai understands it, he says that um, when it says Eish, it, it actually gives you two options, either a fire, but also um, a coal, a glowing coal. So, we see that Eish does include glowing coals, and therefore it said Kachalei Eish to say that, no, the fire that we want is specifically the glowing coal, not the fire. Omer Rava, Rava asked Akasha on Abai, Rotsa gachelis yavi, rotsa shalevis yavi. Really, Abaye? You think that what the Pasuk is saying when it says Eish is that maybe if he wants, he could bring a coal, but if he wants, he could also just be a, bring a flame? Think for a second. Shalevis blo gachelis, heichi mishkachasla. How are you going to find a flame without a coal? Kigon de shafiola, lemono, mishra, vasli benura? Says Rava. How are you going to get a flame without a coal? What, maybe you're going to take like some kind of a vessel, put some oil on it, and then just like burn the fire on that vessel? Why would I need a pasuk to teach me that you're not allowed to take a vessel, put a bunch of oil on it, and then and then create a flame that way? You wouldn't do this in front of a king of flesh and blood, a human king. You wouldn't make a flame by taking a vessel and putting oil on it and burning the oil, because it makes lots, lots of smoke, and it's not a very pleasant flame. Well then, in front of the Abishter, certainly you are not going to make a flame consisting of a vessel with oil on it that you're burning. Therefore, Abaye, it's inconceivable to think that the Torah needed to tell us that you're not allowed to take a, to use a flame that is made on a vessel that you smeared with oil and now it's making a very smoky flame. I don't need the Torah to tell me don't use that, rather use a glowing coal. So Elam Rava Tritzachi. Rather says Rava, understand the Psukim in the following way. Gachale, when it says coal, Yachol Omumos Vilolochos. I might think that Gachale, coals, specifically includes dim coals, but not glowing coals. Tamalomar Eish, therefore it says fire. Now, Eish, if it says Eish, Yachol Yavi Mechza Gacheles Vamechza Shalheves. Ada Ayel Legavoi Havi Kulo Kule Gacheles. So Rava says, if it just said fire, I may have had a half minute to think, then maybe I'll take a coal that is 50% flame and 50% coal, meaning you're in the process of burning the coal. So you take a coal that is not yet completely burned, so it's 50% flame, 50% coal. And then while you're on your way to go to, you know, the Fnai Vilifnim, inside the Kodesh, have a Kule, or I guess the Kodesh of Kodeshim. Where was the Mizbah HaKtoris? The Mizbah HaKtoris was in the Kodesh, not in the Kodesh of Kodeshim, right? I think. The Gavoy, have a Kule Gacheles. And then once he brings it inside, which I guess wherever the Mizbah HaKtoris was, by then, it would be completely a coal. That you have to take a, a complete shovel's worth of coals of fire from the Mizbeach. That already from the time that you take the coal, it should already be, um, you know, com- uh, you know, not a, a, a complete glowing coal and not 50% coal and 50% flame. Okay. Very good. So we see that according to Rava, um, Eish also does include Gacheles, right? Meaning I would think that when it says Eish, I might think 50% coal, 50% fire. So we see that Eish also does include Gacheles. Ibarilu, the Gemara concludes with a question that we have seen in Mesech the Brachas and Mesech the Shabbos. Omamos or Omamos, Omer Bitzchak Arazim Lomamu Began Elokim. When it says the word Omamos, dim, is it with an Aleph or with an Ayin? Says Rabbi Yitzchak, well, we have a Pasuk that says, Arazim lo amamuhu, began lukim, that is with an ayin. That was talking about, who is that talking about? Alchiram um, melech tzur nemar, says Rashi. He was talking about Achiram, the king of tzur, that I think he was like really strong and um, stuff. So, that was the 75 of Mesechta Psachim. So, yeah, it was kind of an interesting daf, right? Meaning, like, talk about different kind of implement, 
implementations of fire. So the first thing we talked about was cooking a Korban Pesach in, on a grill. Um, the Mishnah said you're not allowed to do it. Then it brought a story with Rabbi Gamil that he did it. So he said, well, you're allowed to use a grill if it's not directly on the middle. Okay, so if you have a grill where you have like skewers that are, I don't know, perpendicular to the grill, whatever it is, but the meat itself is right, is, is opposite the fire. It's not opposite. It's not resting on metal. So that would be okay. Um, we talked about baking uh, bread in an oven that you had uh, uh, burning orla in it, and then you kind of swept that out. And Ravada Barhaba said that that would be acceptable. We gave two reasons. Basically, asked the question based on the Korban Pesach that the Korban Pesach, um, if you were to remove the heat source, it would not work. Um, implying that specifically by Korban Pesach, it wouldn't be considered roasting, but by bread, it would be considered a proper way of baking it. We gave two answers that no, just like it's not considered roasting by Korban Pesach, it's also not considered baking in any other case. And also, um, the other answer is that no, it doesn't work by, well, when it comes to, um, Orla, the issue is not about baking or roasting. It's about is the Orla there or not? And as long as you sweep it away, it's gone. And Rebbe says that if you cook a Korban Pesach on coals, then that would work. And then we got into a whole discussion about are coals considered fire or not? And because we have a Bryce when it comes to burns, that seems to be learning on coals separately. Um, we made a distinction between coals of wood versus coals of metal. Then we had other ways of understanding that, no, really when it says fire, it actually does include coals. Um, and that is why Rabbi can say that you're allowed to cook with coals. We then, you're allowed to cook carbon Pesach with coals. That would be considered fire. And we got along the way, we got into that interesting discussion about uh, capital punishment and using lead because it says, but HT sorry for anything that comes from any kind of uh, heat source that was heated up with fire. Friends, have a great day. Peace out.